Good evening and welcome to the HometownNewsTV.com. I'm Lori Young. And I'm John Young. In tonight's show, we're going to be looking at what's new in this week's edition of the Hometown News. Then we're going to be looking at some photos and videos from around the area. We've got some information about some piping up in Long Prairie that a lot of people have been asking about. We've got a couple of storm images from last week and I wanted to point out a couple of things on those. And we'll be looking at a house that moved through the area and kind of show you how that all went together. And finally, we're going to look at some of the leaves that are starting to change in the area. But first, we're going to look at what's in this week's edition of the Hometown News. Lori, what do we have? We have Harvey McKay, your business depends on your personal touch. Dave says, saving advice for a young child. And the second article is the incentives of paying smaller debts off and then working your way to the larger debts. Uh, Tom Keen did an article on rural electrification going from candles and lanterns to the 32 volt batteries all the way up to the current electricity that we have today. And the Big Birch Lake Association had awarded their 2017 Friends a Big Birch Lake Award to Tom and Lori Fox. So you need to check that out in this week's paper. And we have the Gregel City Minutes. John, this week you had done your article with the Small Town DIY with, the title was, was called, They Will Love Your Review. Yeah, I wanted to kind of focus on reviews because a lot of us, were, no matter where we're shopping, if we're shopping for this or that or any of these items, one of the first things we do, even if we're buying it locally, is go look for reviews on the product. So I wanted to give you some tips on how to write a good review because reviews are going to become the thing that are going to drive business for our local businesses and they're also going to help us as consumers to buy things. So I wanted to make sure that when you write, take the time to write a review, that your review is going to be something that people will use and appreciate. Next, we're going to look at some of the personal things that are in the paper, starting with our death notices. Lori, what do we have this week? Evelyn Mary Kristelsek, age 94 of Holdingford, passed away Saturday, September 23rd. Services were held Wednesday, September 27th at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church in Opal. Diane Gallus, age 70 of St. Cloud, passed away Tuesday, September 19th. Services were held Friday, September 22nd at the Church of St. Anthony in St. Cloud. Roy M. Nelson, age 88 of Swanville, passed away Thursday, September 21st. Services were held Saturday, September 23rd at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Swanville. And you can find the full obituary notices in the paper. And we also have one new one that came in today. That is Alusen Pete T. Schaefer, age 72 of Pequot Lakes, formerly of Lawn Prairie. He had passed away Friday, September 22nd, and his services will be held at 11 a.m. on Saturday, November 18th, 2017 at St. John's Catholic Church in Swanville. Up next, we have a birth announcement. We'd like to welcome Sofia Gabriela Garcia, born Monday, September 25th, 2017 at the Central Care Health in Melrose. And we have an engagement, Allison Neal and Nathan Knutson. And they're planning a wedding on December 16th, 2017 at Temple Baptist Church in Jamestown, North Dakota. Next, we'll get into some of the local events that are going on around the area here that we covered this week. Lori, when you went through Long Prairie, you probably have seen on the south end of town all those pipes that are going kind of across the road. If you're looking at that old Lake Charlotte Road, mm -hmm. there are pipes and different things. So I've had people asking about that. What's going on up there? This is at the intersection of First Street South and the old Lake Charlotte Road, which is when it goes to the swimming beach. At that intersection, you'll see to the, to the north side of that intersection, you'll see piping and wells all around that area. And people have been wondering, you know, what's going on? I've had people guessing that because it's by the old lumberyard, maybe there was some some seepage of something or is it contaminated what it is what's going on is the city of long prairie is had all these installed because they need to lower the water table in this area so they are pumping out thousands of gallons every minute pretty much i mean it's just an incredible amount going through these big 12 inch pipes they're going to be pumping water out of that to try to lower the water level in that area so they can rebuild first street south that section of First Street South, which goes behind the hardware stores and things, is all gravel. So they want to make that and build it up. They have to dig down into the into the ground a ways and re-basically pack it down so they can tar it and make it so it'll last. So they're trying to lower the water level, and hopefully, if, if things go right, they're getting close to that, but they've been doing this for goodness. I think it's been since March, because uh, I remember driving over that... that two fire hose type contraction off and on through. And I, th yeah, I think they were working on it even last year because oh, throughout the winter we saw pipes and different things going on. So it's been a long process, but I was talking to a gentleman today and he thinks they're getting close to the time when they'll be able to actually start 
working on the road again. There must be a lot of water there. Holy. Oh, it's the, the water table is very high because they were only a few feet higher than Lake Charlotte, which is just, mm. you know, within spitting distance of the road itself. So, yeah, they're trying to lower that because they want to dig down. When you're building a road in kind of a marshy area, you want to dig it down six to eight feet so you're down below the frost level. And then you have to start layering it and you have to put cloth down. And there's just so many things you need to do when you're building a road in a marsh. And that's kind of what that area is. So, for those of you wondering, that's what all the piping and wells are about there on the intersection of First Street South and the old Lake Charlotte Road. John, we had some storm updates from last week that you were going to update us with. Yeah, I was, it was going through, of course, as we deliver today. And I was through in Melrose. And first off, the highway department on the, both the off-ramp and the on-ramp on that south side of the freeway they were completely wiped out of mm -hmm. trees. And they're still over there working. And they've cleaned those up and they've taken all the stumps out and cleaned it. So it's all basically a fresh dirt patch and then a little bit of hedging around the edges. So the highway department was still working. But it was the old that Arsenal Auto that they were building. I wanted to, to uh, show you guys that. And I'll pop over to the picture here. You take a look at this image, and in this image, it, it looks like you know the, what we saw the other day, and I kind of was thinking that this wasn't a true pole shed, because you think of a pole shed, those are our four by six or five by six posts, and it's like the wind couldn't have done that. Well, we take a look at this additional image, and you can see in the back of the, of the shed that it was indeed a pole shed, and that, sh that wind snapped those poles off anywhere from two feet to four feet off the ground, snapped them right off. Uh, which is just incredible. If you take a look at this image that came from uh, KSTP, they did this is just a little screenshot. And you can go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash hometown news. We linked over so you can go in and find the link for this video. In this in this shot, you can see kind of in the back of the of the building there on the right side where you can see some of those little stumps that are still standing. I missed that the first time. I kind of was assuming one way to build a pole shed is to build it like a stick frame like you do a house. So you've got your plates and you, I was kind of thinking by looking at the debris of it and we'll take a look at that in this this image. You look at the, the debris of it and it looks like it's po or it's a stick frame like you do a house because you see all these two bys mm -hmm. laying around. So it's just it was incredible to me that this was indeed a pole shed and it snapped it. Another thing from that overhead view, and you got to check that out again, go to our Facebook page to see the, the image. That building was picked up, it was taken across the street to the east and over the fences and kind of dumped on down that, that on-ramp that goes towards the east there. So that m building was moved 200 feet or more and deposited over on the other side there. And again, you take a look at the overhead photos, you'll get to see that. And the final thing is when we went and looked at the boomerang building, we just thought there was one section of roof that was mm -hmm. that was out. There's actually two. And again, you can check the photo out here. Two sections of the roof were missing. So that was kind of, a, I didn't realize that there were two missing. That explains why there was so much blown insulation all mm -hmm. over the next half acre. So uh, again, go out to the Facebook page, our Facebook, um, facebook.com slash hometown news. There's a link there to the KSTP video. And they've got just a neat little drone, it's kind of raw drone footage there, but it's a neat overlook of all the damage and such and they show right after with all those trees down and there's a little guy down there trying to cut his way through these trees it's kind of a neat little video and again that's on our facebook page yes so yep we linked over the facebook page facebook page perfect now john we've had a lot of excitement because obviously last week this whole showed up over by the rock tavern and you know we've been kind of teased off and on with the power company that the power is going to be off and then with the storm damage that the power was going to be left alone because of the crews being out uh, cleaning up store damage and such. And and even still after that, we had gotten a call Monday, Tuesday, we were supposed to be out of power, but turned out it was Wednesday we were out of power. And John, tell us about this house. Yeah, so this was a house that was being moved from the Freeport area. And this is an old, old house here. And it's, it's really at the time was one of the higher end houses in the area. Um, from what I've heard now, I haven't had the chance to go see in the inside of it, but the inside is supposed to be spectacular. And it's just got a lot of ornate or ornate decorations and, and uh, finishes for its time. So the owners of it bought it for, for next to nothing, but they had to move it from the Freeport area and they had to move it up to their the new home, which is up by Long Lake, just, uh, just to the north and a little bit east of the hub. That was a process because you've got a house, which moving a house isn't that difficult, but this is a large house and this is quite a process. Let's take a look at some of the video of the house moving its way through the Gray Eagle area. 
So this was the house as it was approaching Main Street in Gray Eagle. They had to turn and go down one block on Highway 28. So they had to turn at the Sinclair Station and go down a block to avoid uh, some, some three-phase power lines that were located near the old school. In that position, they were a little bit lower, the power lines were, than they were coming this way and working its way around because they ended up going down. They turned uh, north to go past the funeral home and then they turned just beyond the credit union and worked their way back up. Now what you're seeing in this spot in the video, and we've sped the video up so it goes quicker, is that in order to make these turns, they had a crew that was winching the wheels to turn it a little bit, and then they were throwing sand under those wheels or in front of those wheels so they would kind of act as a lubricant. And I'm just trying to get out of the way here, and again, this is all sped up. On the left side, you can see the electric company. They actually had three boom trucks there, and they had disconnected the the uh, uh, three phase and they're using these trucks to basically push those wires up and out of the way but they're still alive so they had their big fiberglass poles up there to help move those wires. So imagine the surprise as, as people were coming down Highway 28 there were semis there were cars and different people they were coming down the street to continue on their way to wherever they were going and they see this massive house which basically is taking up both lanes as you can see it coming down and there I got a shot of the trucks holding the wires up there. Just an incredibly large house, and yet it's it's completely structurally sound and nice and square, and everything was just really just needing a little love, and it's going to be a fabulous house. Kind of reminds me of the Charlie Brown Christmas, you know, the ugly little tree, how it turned out to be pretty nice is kind of the same with the house. Yeah, that's what it's going to definitely be. Well, here it's his final resting or stop right here up by Long Lake, just north and east of the hub a little bit. Take a look at that. They brought that house in and they backed it down that hill. They had, from what, I, what I'd heard, they had winch trucks in there, they had their trucks, they had their bobcat, they had a cat, and they brought it down the hill and, and there is where it's going to be sitting on that lake lot here up on Long Lake. Wow, it'll have some spectacular lake views. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, a beautiful, not only view, but the house once it's all finished up and, and kind of nestled in there, it's going to be just a really nice place. I think they're going to be really happy but all the work that they're going to have to put into that. A uh, big question that we've already had is, is something like this is not a cheap thing to move. Houses can be fairly reasonable to move if it's a smaller house. Mm -hmm. This was an incredibly large house. This particular one was well over $50,000 to move this from point A to point B. But you're also having, uh, uh, the electric company had at one time four trucks, one trailing, three in front, and the three were doing like the three phase there. And they have those trucks, you know, I think they had three and then they added a fourth one when it went through Gray Eagle. They were there all day. So you've got the movers, you've got all the things there, and then you've got the electric uh, uh, multiple crews. Oh, it's just a, just a process to move something that large. And John, you had mentioned though, not only were they moving the lines, but I heard that there were some street lights they had to deal with also. Yeah, they tend to take some street lights on, on uh, coming up on 33, that's the road that comes into Gray Eagle from the south, and the lights are still in the ditch, so they have to come back and put those up, and as you're going through, it's like, oh, there it is, oh yeah, there it is. So electric's on for people, but they just can't see. It gets dark, they're going to have to stay at home. Wow, does it illuminate the, the ditch? No, it doesn't. They, they're all disconnected completely. <laughs> so John, today on route, how are the colors on the leaves turning? You can definitely see that things are progressing and they, the trees are changing. But then you also have spots where the leaves have been completely blown off the trees in some areas. Uh, like this was a kind of a cool uh, shot. The, the cows are out there in a the pasture enjoying the day. And this tree typically would be nice and, and vivid in color, but today it's kind of bare. And then you have some spots where the color on the trees is it's probably at that 50 percentile or greater. Now there's a lot of green out there. I'm thinking that starting next weekend, you're really going to have a lot of uh, beautiful colors around the area. So if you're making plans to go out and check the fall colors, starting next weekend and probably for the next weekend or two after that are going to be great times to get out as long as we don't have that big strong wind that's gonna blow all the leaves off and make it going from beautiful colors to nothing. And if the weather cooperates, I know we've had some of our neighbors where they've gone to like the state campgrounds and some of the local parks and it's just beautiful when when they come back with the pictures of what they they've taken with the trails all the trees and the ground is just all colored and, different colors and we're really kind of lucky because just up the road in little falls the at uh, Lindbergh state park is one of those locations where people like to go for a walk in the fall it's a beautiful park any time of the year but the fall colors up there with all the hardwoods it's an incredible uh, opportunity to be able to go experience that and it's only you know half an hour away from us 
And John, we have obviously some that are even closer. We've got the Birch Lake State Forest just down the road from us. And there's a lot of different parks. And also the Wabagon Trail. I know from when you bike it from that holding fort and bolus direction, I've heard it's just beautiful. That it, that it is, yeah. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity. And this weekend, you're going to have basically Friday is going to be a beautiful day. Saturday is going to be probably the best day of the weekend because Sunday we're going to have rain coming in. So if you're looking to go out and just start looking at the colors, Saturday is going to be your day for this weekend because come Sunday, we're going to be stuck in the house once again with rain. Next, we're going to go through some of the upcoming events that will be happening around our area. Lori, what do we have? The Fluff and Puff Pillow Cleaning Service will be at the Uppsala Area Community Center on Wednesday, October 4th from 7 till noon. And come on over to the Village View Apartments on Wednesday, October 4th from 1 to 3 for some good folk and old time music. And if you're in need of your flu shots, you can get them right here in Gray Eagle at the Village View Apartments on Friday, October 6th from 9 until 10 in the Community Room at the Village View. St. John's Catholic Church is having their 33rd annual craft fair on Saturday, October 7th from 9 until 3 at the Swanville School. Bertram Bean Bake will be held Saturday, October 7th from 4.30 till 8 at the Bertram Community Center. Secret Heart is going to be having their matching grant breakfast on Sunday, October 8th, serving from 8.30 till 12 noon at the Sacred Heart Church basement in Freeport. Freeport Fall Fest is going on this Saturday, September 30th. They'll have different activities throughout the whole day. We have kids games, there's inflatables, exhibitors. The Bob Show is gonna be playing from 11.30 to 1.30, along with the corn maze at the Harvest Church. And for those of you who have been watching the, the campus building going on at the Central Care Health in Long Prairie, they are gonna be having an open house from four to 7 p.m. on Monday, October 9th, and is open for tours and refreshments, so check it out. 55 Smart Driver Course will be held in Uppsala at the Community Covenant Church on Thursday, October 12th from 12 noon till 4 p.m. They are offering a four or eight hour refresher course. Well, that's gonna wrap up our show for this week. We thank you for watching our show. If you see something happening around the area, we have got a spot on our website where you can go to. You can go to htnewstv.com and that takes you to a specific page on our website where you can go there and you can upload photos or videos of things that are happening around the area. And your eyes out in the field help us an awful lot to find out what's going on and to be able to help you bring those things to our show on Thursday. So please, if you see something happening, make sure you can upload that and send that to us. We really appreciate it. And check out our local newspaper, The Hometown News. We have got a lot of advertising in there and they're what support the newspaper and support us bringing the news to you. And if you're looking for a spot to go eat or something to do, check it out, The Hometown News. And also The Hometown News is on our website at thehometownnews.biz. Once again, thank you for watching the show. We'll be back to you next Thursday at our regular time. We'll catch you then. I'm Lori Young. And I'm John Young from The Hometown News TV.